Hi there, my name's Eddie, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm the Wolfsbane Witch. And today is just gonna be a little sort of chat slash lecture slash sharing thing where I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that I have learned through working with plant spirits and working with my house plants. And so today I'm gonna be sharing with you kind of some musings that have come to me uh, within the past couple days um, after I had an experience working with one of my aloe plants. So I was watering my aloe plant the other day, think about like almost a week ago, and I was kind of musing on this idea of balance. Um, so the idea of balance comes up a lot in witchcraft and in spiritual circles. Um, and typically this idea of balance is like the idea of kind of making this consistent 50-50 equilibrium. Like these two scales constantly, you know, within that sort of equal footing. Um, and the goal is to stay within that equal footing at all times in order to achieve power or enlightenment or magic or what have you, right? The idea is to be living and to constantly be within balance. And this balance concept can be anything from like sun and moon to, you know, light and dark to god and goddess, if that's what you're into. I'm, that's a whole other can of worms that I'm not going to get into. But, um, <laughs> and like even in our real life, right? Like even outside of the witchy sphere, outside of the occult sphere, outside of spirituality and all that, there's this idea of balance that still persists within that same sort of, um, within that same sort of idea or concept of that equilibrium. Like, you know, work-life balance or chores versus leisure or family versus friends balance, like all these things. Um, and I think that the idea of balance is very hard to achieve. And I want to talk about what my aloe plant taught me about what balance actually is. And the concept basically stems from the idea that balance is not a thing. It is a product or an effect. And the cause to the effect that equals the product of balance is harmony. Now these might seem like basically the same thing, but I'm going to break down how they're not and I'm going to um, kind of show you and talk to you about what the difference is, or at least what my aloe plant kind of showed me what the difference was. So basically I was watering my aloe plant the other day, musing upon this idea of balance and, you know, just, just thinking upon it and not really like thinking anything in specific either way. Um, but as I was watering this plant, I got like this, almost like a vision in my mind. And it was like a little movie playing almost. And it kind of showed me what balance actually is as the, the effect of harmony. And then it showed me what harmony was and how the two were different. And I was really fascinated by what I learned within this sort of psychic moment within this sort of connection between me and this plant spirit. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it and share about it because I think that it's very, at the very least, interesting, but also kind of profound in some ways. So today I'm just going to be talking about balance versus harmony, or what I'm going to be calling control versus flow. And I'm going to get into all that a little bit later on in this video. So, but let me just kind of start with um, what the issue of balance is and why I don't think that it is attainable, uh, or at least why I don't think it's realistic. So reason number one <laughs> why I don't think we should be trying to do balance is because, as I said before, balance is not a thing, it is a product. So, that'd be like you trying to do slinky. Or trying to do basketball. 
not like the sport, but like the ball, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't do the product, you uh, create the product. The product is a byproduct of you, you know, sewing together the leather to create the ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the slinky is the product of, you know, whatever uh, metal or whatever plastic you use to create the slinky. You don't do slinky, you make slinky. <laughs> I don't know why I chose a slinky, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, the second issue is a little bit less from definition. The second one is this idea of the, the balance, the equilibrium, the balancing of the scales, right? You know, having the balance, the 50-50, the constant equilibrium of light and dark, of feminine and masculine, of you know, work and play, of all these things, right? And the problem that I have with that is that scales that are like this, any little tiny thing can tip one even slightly, right? Or tip the other even slightly. And then all of a sudden, your balance is thrown completely off. Because a 50-50 balance is only 1% away from not being balanced. You know what I mean? So what this, what this creates, or the problem that this can create, is this sense of, like, I will never be balanced. You know, I'm chronically imbalanced because, like, I can't keep the scales at this level all the time. So it's a very fragile balance. It's a, it's a very um, hard to obtain in the first place, and it's also hard to maintain. And I also don't think that it is necessary at all times. It's not necessarily always appropriate. And how my aloe plant showed me this is basically by showing me how this idea of 50-50 equilibrium doesn't really exist or translate well into how nature works. And of course, we are natural beings. We are organic beings. We evolved from other organic beings. We are part of nature as well. So even though I might not be a plant, the laws of nature still apply to me. So um, what it kind of showed me was that, yes, 50-50 balance does exist in nature sometimes. And when it does, it's often coincidental. It has nothing to do with the overarching idea of what is cosmically equalized. You know what I mean? Like, the whole entire cosmos is not 50-50. Instead, what you see in nature is this sort of, um, everything has its own harmony. Everything has its own flow. Everything has its own energy um, that it works within. So, you know, for instance, a cactus cannot survive with 50% water, 50% sun. Another plant might be able to, but a cactus will drown with that much water and that little sun. It needs more sun than water. But an aquatic plant, like kelp, needs way more water than it might need sunlight. You know what I mean? So, you know, are these plants all of a sudden not balanced because they don't need 50-50 of everything? No. They are just living within their natural equilibrium that they need to thrive. And my aloe plant kind of showed me that everyone has their own equilibrium that they need to thrive. And this equilibrium will change throughout their lifetime. So what my aloe plant kind of showed me within this vision is that if you impose an ideology upon your nature that does not work with your nature, it inevitably won't work for you. Because your natural body, the nature of who and what you are, does not care, does not bend to your will or to your ideology. You know, no matter how hard I will it to be, I cannot suddenly transform into a rock. I just can't. Even if my ideology states that I should be able to, 
that is not within my nature. That's not within my equilibrium. That's not within my possibilities, right? And some of the problems that come with enforcing this idea of constant equilibrium of 50-50 is that it imposes a will upon you that may go against what you naturally need or what might naturally work for you in that moment. It might actually become detrimental to you in some ways. For instance, if you are doing deep shadow work at some time, you might want to delve a little bit deeper into the dark aspects than into the light aspect because you're doing shadow work. You want to dig deep into what you're doing. You want to be present into what you're doing. And so for a while you might immerse yourself into the darkness, 100%. That doesn't mean you're not balanced because you're gonna need to come out eventually. And when you do, you might come out into the light for 100% for a little while. Or you might shake it up a bit. You know, you might do, you know, 80% here, 20% there. You might even fraction it off into like four different you know, little sections of different things that you do. Your equilibrium that you need in order to thrive will not always be 50-50, and that is okay. That is natural. That is you flowing within your natural harmony. That's kind of the next thing I want to get into, is how do we flow? How do we get into our natural harmony? What do we need to do in order to do this? And my aloe plant showed me that as well. So within this vision, my aloe plant kind of showed me this um, almost like a bunch of different cut scenes of different plants in different environmental factors. So like some were in a flood, some were in a drought, some had very deep roots, some had just grown, some were in great environments, some were in polluted environments. And the equilibrium all of them needed was different. But regardless of that, they were all present in where they were. They weren't trying to change what was going on around them. They were simply accepting it and working with it as a resource. They were deciding what they were going to do next based on what they had right then. So for instance, if it rained, the plant drank. If it was sunny, the plant soaked up the sun. If it was cloudy and it wasn't raining, the plant was focusing on growing its roots or its leaves. It was not trying to change the fact that it was raining. It wasn't trying to change the fact that it was sunny. It wasn't trying to change the fact that it was cloudy. It was simply working with what it had and responded to what it had the best way it could. It was working with its resources in the present. In other words, a tree during the summer is not going to fall its leaves off like it is going to in autumn. You know, some leaves might die, sure, but like a tree in autumn is going to do what it does in that present moment for what it needs presently after what it had already experienced within the spring and summer, you know? The tree cannot always be within this homeostasis of constant blooming and budding. Sometimes it needs to go dormant. Sometimes it needs that energy for itself so then it can rebud and rebloom again. That's part of its equilibrium. It, that's part of also it being present in the moment, it being present in the season, it being present for what it needs and how it's reacting to what's happening around it. I just want to add like a little interjection here. I'm not trying to say that people are enforcing this idea of a completely equal 50-50 split of balance. I I'm sure a lot of people who do have a dualistic frame or mindset do see it more in this harmony way. What I'm trying to say is that there is this idea, this, this concept, this pervasive almost desire to treat it like a 50-50 concept. And I'm, I was pondering upon this idea when I had this experience with my plant. And so this is my plant giving me its response to that sort of line of thinking. So 
I don't necessarily see balance as 50-50. I see balance, like I said earlier, as the product of harmony, which is, you know, not necessarily 50-50, but still um, an act of cycle, an act of giving in 100% or fully being present in whatever you are, wherever you are, whatever you need at the time, um, and that give and take. And um, I also want to talk a little bit more about that, too, because I feel like I didn't <laughs> while I was uh, actually conversating on this. So while we're in this little introduction period, why don't we do that? So what I'm trying to get at here with this idea of the tree, right, during different seasons, you might be able to say, well, spring and summer is 50%, and then fall and winter is 50%, right? But they're not doing it interchangeably or at the same time, is what I mean. And that's what I meant by the homeostasis. The tree cannot constantly be in homeostasis of complete balance. Its form of balance is giving in 100% to what it needs, to its environment, is giving in and being present 100% in whatever it is. It's not trying to be 50% in winter and 50% in summer at the same time. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not trying to balance the summer and the winter within it. It is giving in fully to the season it's in. It is experiencing fully the season it's in, and it's reacting justly to the nature of what it needs and to how it will thrive. Hope that makes a little bit more sense. So another thing that I want to, you know, point out a little bit is... Um, Kind of like knowing what plant you are um, might help you kind of flow a little bit better um, into harmony. Like knowing what you need to thrive, you know, and also taking stock of where you are presently. What is at your fingertips? What are your resources presently? And if you don't have resources, you know, what are you going to do based on what you presently need? You know, unlike a plant, we can get up and actually do things and kind of decide what we're going to do next, which is a a big W for people. I mean, dunking on my plants here a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like, that's a privilege that we have, and so why not use it, you know? Why are we trying to um, put ourselves into these ideological uh, regiments that don't translate to nature. And um, I don't know, I just, I found this to be kind of an interesting experience, not only because I have never gotten a vision from that aloe plant before, and then all of a sudden I did the other day, and that, that alone was pretty cool, but just the idea that it presented to me was kind of interesting. I never really thought about um, balance versus harmony. I always kind of saw them as the, just different words for the same thing. But based on what I gathered from this vision, I kind of understand now how they're not quite the same and how balance is the product of successful flow, of successful being in harmony. You know, if you are in harmony, you will be balanced because that's the balance that you need. It's not necessarily balance in the sense of the scales, it's balance in the sense of what do you need to nourish yourself and how are you going to do that and are you doing that? Um, which I thought was kind of neat <laughs> at the very least. So that's kind of what I have to say for this video. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if this is something that you have applied in your life, or if you see balance and harmony as the same thing, if you see them as different things, how do you see them? You know, just 
I just want to have a chat about this topic and um, like I said, I just wanted to share kind of what I've been thinking on for the past like week or so. So yeah, that's just kind of what's been on my mind and I hope you enjoyed. I know this was kind of a rambly, weird, not very well thought out video, but you know, I, I've been felt kind of drawn to do videos like this where it's just kind of off the cuff and kind of like just me sharing what I've been thinking and what I've been feeling in a more, I guess, I guess authentic way in a sort of way. Um, because I, I've kind of realized that like when I script a video or when I plan out a video to do, um, the day comes to film it and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> or it just doesn't feel right. You know, it feels like I don't even want to say that anymore because it doesn't feel like me. Or I want to say this instead today, but I can't because I already promised to do this. And so what I'm trying to do is just chill out on myself and to give myself that space to just talk about what I've, what I want to talk about, what has been on my mind, what I've been thinking about. Um, and I'm not trying to do it to uh, say like, this is the truth, this is, you know, the magical law. I don't think that exists anyway, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to educate with a capital E <laughs> any of this information. What I'm trying to do is, I guess, share these ideas or philosophies um, that I have worked into my life or that I have found to be helpful or profound in some way with the hopes that people who might resonate with that might gain something from it. Um, people who may not have run across someone else talking about it because inevitably somebody's probably said something similar to what I've said today, right? It, it's a, it's a small world, but it's a big world. You know what I mean? Like there's lots of people and there's lots of witches and there's lots of channels that I've never seen, right? Um, so I think that just allowing myself the space to just talk about what I want to talk about is good in that aspect. It's also good because, um, it kind of makes me excited to make videos. Like, um, I'm not dreading sitting down to you know, record a video because this is something that I'm like almost giddy to talk about. Like I just, I, I want to get this out there. I want to share it. Um, and this video, I mean, I did have you guys vote for it. So I was a little bit like, ah, should I? Because it is planned, but at the same time, it's not planned because originally I was just going to do like a little, like five easy plants to grow for, you know, Green witches with a brown thumb, <laughs> you know, just something stupid like that. I mean, maybe you guys would like that, and if you would, I'll make a video like that, maybe. But honestly, like, I I sat down to record that, and I just decided that that's just not what I wanted to do. And I'd rather just share some of my ponderings that are at least kind of related to the topic of magical houseplants. So, yeah, that was my ramble on magical houseplants, and also my ramble on why I'm making videos like this. So, um, yeah, if you've watched this far, thank you so much for watching. If you've subscribed already, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, but you would like to, go ahead and do that. I post videos pretty often. And other than that, have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.